Hi guys, I'm down in the garbage room in the uh, basement of the EEV Blog corporate uh, towers here and check it out, we have a box, Samsung Smart TV, uh, what is it, a 55 inch uh, LED TV, eh, empty box, nothing in it but, ta-da, behind it we have what looks like an old Samsung Plasma TV. Definitely worth grabbing. Hmm, wonder if it works. Maybe not. Eh, we'll find out. And I've got to tell you, the thing weighs an absolute ton. I don't know, like 50 kilos or something. So I got the uh, trolley out, put some uh, tape around it, and uh, we'll lug it back to the lab. Um, it's 2005 vintage, if we can have a look uh, down here, September 2005 plasma. Anyway, we'll have a good look at it when we get back to the lab. Even if it doesn't work, if it's got like a dead uh, plasma display or something, ah well, scrap it for parts. And we're back in the lab and geez, this thing is bloody heavy, let me tell you. They, you know, it's got to be, uh, oh, I don't know, 40 to 50 kilos or something like that. Incredible difference compared to uh, the uh, LCD monitors these days. Let's take a look at the label here. It's a uh, PS42S5H. Samsung, well, it's the uh, 5HX, I guess, slash XSA. I have no idea if it's a good one or not. I mean, 380 watts. Man, you've got to be kidding me. Jeez. I don't know you fly to Alpha Centauri with 380 watts. Absolutely incredible. Uh, manufactured uh, September 2005, made in Korea. That'd be South Korea. And, um, yeah, it's got true surround, blah, 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 blah. And uh, let's take a look. Not exactly, um, you know, a feature. Well, it is uh, for the time, I guess, but it's only got a single uh, HDMI input, uh, regular AV, composite AV, in and out, S-Video. And uh, it does have two component inputs, which is pretty good. And, of course, an analog uh, tuner. They wouldn't have had uh, digital tuners in them back then. So, anyway, uh, there's the model code. Serial number. Now, I am presuming it does not work because these um, plasmas, they're notorious, not, not just, uh, you know, this model or Samsung, but just all plasmas in general, notorious for uh, failing. And there's, of course, the uh, famous plasma graveyard, as, they, as uh, TV service techs or people in this industry like to call it, where all these dead plasmas uh, uh, go to die. They've um, uh, just been uh, overtaken by... LCD, they weren't a very reliable technology at all. So I'd be very surprised if it works. So hopefully it doesn't work and uh, we can at least have an attempt to repair. But um, I, even if it's faulty and I have a go at uh, repairing it here, I don't like my chances because um, uh, usually, it's, well, in a lot of cases, it's the panel itself and they're very expensive to replace these things unless you can junk another uh, of the same model unit and I can see huge big power supplies in there it's going to be really good so um, I guess let's power it up and uh, see what this turd does all right here we go folks let's uh, power this thing up um, it's so like it doesn't come with a uh, stand unfortunately it's just got like this separate uh, speaker system with uh, that looks like the power button there but sort of like it's hinged separately from the main display down here so it's a uh, it's kind of weird, and uh, so without a stand, it doesn't uh, stand up, uh, well, it doesn't stand up at all, actually. Anyway, let's plug it in, here we go, and, uh... oh, hey, hey, we have a blue, a blue ringed light down the bottom, that's a good sign, but, uh, so at least it's uh, gotten through the uh, soft uh, power system and it is starting up so let's give it a go Oi, I just heard the relays go click 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 very con oh I saw something I saw something oh flicker oh. <laughs> check it out check it out it works it's alive incredible I didn't expect this sucker to work I, I expected there to be some sort of um problem with it. Now I don't have the I don't have the remote but the buttons are on the side down here. 
Let's, I mean, uh, this is, of course, uh, for you young whippersnappers who haven't seen this before, um, there's some of the cosmic background radiation here, okay? This is just uh, noise being picked up from the analog uh, tuner, of course. Um, so let's press the menu key. Hey, look at that. Menu key, we're in. How do you do it? Can't believe this thing works. Oh, no, how do you channel button there we go check it out this thing seems to work just fine how do we get into there I guess we press the bottom button yeah we're in blue screen off let's turn the blue screen on shall we let's see if I can press on hey there we go hey look at that look at that let's turn the menu off there so we've got all blue how do you... Yeah, you just press it a couple of times, and look at that! Look at that, folks! That looks pretty schmick! Cannot believe... Well, they, they tossed out this fully working 42-inch... Well, presumably fully working, I don't know if the sound works, haven't tried that yet. Um, but the video seems to uh, work just fine, at least the inbuilt uh, stuff. So I'm going to hook this up to the... Uh, uh, notebook and uh, see if we can use it as say a PC display or something All right, the notebooks hooked up. It's detected it because it's gone into the uh, uh, different aspect ratio, so And I've just set my camera to uh, shutter priority one sixth of a second. Otherwise you'll get in uh, Flickering on the uh, display there. So you'll notice my hand is really quite blurry now <laughs> There we go, but um, I the PC input does not seem to work because uh, I'm sure the PC is outputting something. I can get another monitor. I've got a whole bunch of monitors here in the lab. Not a problem. Um, but uh, because the source list here, it seems that they've been, it's already been set. So they've disabled the AV, the S video, the components, and the HDMI. So it looks like whoever was using this was just using it for the TV or the PC input. So maybe that's what's wrong with it. The uh, PC input has failed, but um, presumably um, the other inputs uh, work, perhaps. There you go, I'm back to normal uh, shutter mode now, and you can see the flicker on the uh, plasma display there. And I've got it hooked up to another little 15-inch uh, Samsung. I actually scored uh, five of these fully working from the garbage room as well. That was an excellent dumpster dive, and I actually want to do a um, like a video wall with uh, five of these in series. Like actually, I've taken the uh, stands off them and put like uh, five of them across, and actually drive them with an FPGA or uh, something like that. Do something novel with them. So I want to do that. But anyway, it shows that the cable and everything's fine, but this sucker um, doesn't seem to be doing the business on the VGA input, which is a real uh, a bit of a disappointment, but uh, apart from that, it seems to work. Well, I've tried another couple of sources here, uh, component video and also um, an S-video uh, source, and um, nothing. Those inputs automatically detect, by the way, so um, it's seeing that there's signal there, but it's, it doesn't seem to be processing it at all. So um, there does seem to be something wrong with this thing, and that's probably why they tossed it out, I guess. They were using it with uh, some sort of external signal and, well, yeah, it's failed. All right, let's crack it open, shall we? And uh, I don't think I'm going to have a huge amount of time to uh, work on it today, but I uh, want to at least have a look in it. So, yeah, that's, um, well, I'm not a TV service tech, but uh, that is a rather unusual fault. I would have thought that uh, all of the display uh, processing stuff um, seems to work fine, yet it doesn't uh, accept... No, the, all this has to come off. All right. It doesn't uh, accept any external inputs, which is uh, rather weird. I would have thought. If anyone knows any better, please... Uh, leave it in the comments. So it looks like we can just pop off this little panel here um, just for this uh, processor board because that's where the inputs are anyway. 
Um, although we might take off the rest of it because there's a lot of goodness in here. I mean, even if this thing didn't work, um, well worth just scrapping for the boards and the parts, really. Yeah, the uh, screws on that D uh, D15 are holding it down. Ta-da! There we go. There's our main processor board. So if there's going to be a, uh, a fault with this thing, it's going to be on here. I mean, maybe it's a user, you know, maybe I'm not just using the thing right, but I thought, well, you put, you know, the signal in the external inputs and you select the external inputs, it should work. But uh, let's have a look at this main processor board. All right, we have a uh, Samsung uh, BGA chipset here labeled uh, STP22, another Samsung uh, DNIE, that's the uh, processor, that's their, I think one of their whiz bang, um, you know, display technology, uh, custom algorithm y chipset type things. And uh, well, we've got our tuner over here, we've got all our inputs uh, mounted on the one board. I um, sort of didn't expect to see that, I sort of expected maybe a, uh, a uh, separate board for all that perhaps, but there's a lot of electrolytics on here. I mean, look at all these surface mount electrolytics there's an absolute ton of them and these are rather unusual looking um oh i was going to say they're rather un unusual looking uh, caps but they're not they're actually inductors let's take a look and there they are there at uh, first glance you might actually think they're uh caps you can see a cap behind it but of course the dead giveaway is that it's got no um vent on the top of it if you have a look at the uh, at a regular cap here, it's got the um, vent for the external uh, pressure there to vent the pressure. But uh, these ones don't, of course. And there you go, ten uh, micro henrys. But they're a rather unusual looking inductors. Now all of these caps around here, they're obviously uh, coupling caps. If you have a look at uh, just the way they're arranged, they're you know all uh, uh, bunched together. They're sort of like all coming from the various inputs here. So they're just uh, um, AC coupling uh, caps there and because uh, they're not uh, decoupling you know you can't you're not just going to spread them out like that on a board just for uh, uh, decoupling that's uh, crazy but there's an absolute ton of them check it out check out all these surface mount electros man metric buttload and there's the HDMI interface chip it's a uh, silicon image uh, TMDS panel link chipset and uh, you can see there's the there you go it's all coupling down there into the HDMI connector and what else have we got we've got a, another Samsung uh, custom part no idea what that sucker is and no uh, M3OC I don't know off from the top of my head it's upside down all the electrons are going to fall out another one that's upside down is the uh, main Samsung uh, BGA there, digital DNIE, I think it's digital noise something or other. And there's the other large quad flat pack, Samsung DNIE, SDP43, and this is the STP22, so it looks like it's a uh, dual uh, chipset there, doing all that magic. And we've got ourselves a Philips uh, chipset, of course Philips make a ton of uh, TV and video uh, chips, SAA7119, I believe. Uh, not going to bother looking that one up, but obviously some sort of um, input um, uh, channel, you know, uh, sort of input uh, processing for all the various, um, or uh, switching or something like that for all the various uh, external inputs. And there's a Micron Lass MSP44106, I believe, once again. No idea. I have no idea who manufactures that one. A big fancy looking N, NSP 6241A. Sorry for going all uh, handheld today, folks. It's not easy to uh, get this thing. I've got it sitting on the floor and, uh, uh, you know, I just uh, couldn't be bothered uh, getting the tripod into position and uh, doing all this uh, sort of stuff. So it's just much easier to uh, do the old uh, handheld job around here. But uh, there's nothing obvious. Uh, at fold, of course. I can't really uh, see anything on here at all. No blowing caps, no uh, uh, blowing parts or anything like that. I don't know. And as I've discussed in uh, a previous video on uh, dip um, 
the wave soldering on this thing. This board has been uh, reflow soldered, of course. All the parts are uh, reflow soldered, clearly, and using uh, modern reflow soldering techniques. But, of course, the big connectors and stuff down here, they're all um, wave soldered. And the way you can tell that, without even taking the board off, is, ta-da, there it is. It says dip with an arrow. So, obviously, the board travels through that direction, like that, um, through the wave soldering machine. So uh, all of the through-hole stuff on the bottom gets wave soldered as a second process. Now down here we've got a Maxim Max uh, 232, so um, that's right next to the service input uh, jack here. So obviously it's a uh, serial interface uh, service jack, and I'm sure anyone who uh, services these uh, TVs will know all about that because I don't. So there's really not much in terms of uh, I.O. happening here. I mean, here's our uh, uh, output uh, going to the panel. That's our uh, digital um, signal whoop, digital signal output. That comes off far too easily. Anyway, that's our digital output to our panel. Then we've got, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple of uh, control um, stuff over here. One uh, shielded cable going off here. I don't think that's uh, audio because that would be going down to the uh, speakers something else. I don't know why we've got all that multi ribbon cable there just to go down to this um, speaker assembly, speaker and switch assembly. I'm not sure what's happening there. And you'll notice the uh, shielding tape they've got uh, along the edge of this. So they're serious about uh, their EMI, uh, keeping it out and uh, keeping it in. And aha, uh -huh. under here I took this uh, whole panel off and this is why we need this ribbon cable going down here because it drives these LEDs and it also has, presumably, the infrared. Yep, there we go. There's our uh, little Samsung power button on the front there. And let's have a look. Yep, there we go. There's our uh, infrared receiver and our uh, blue LEDs to light up the uh, ring. So that just... Uh, goes into this all acts, this uh, plastic assembly here acts as a light pipe and yes the LEDs sort of go into that outer ring so uh, forming like a, that uh, blue uh, ringed light pipe uh, effect so yeah that's why we need uh, so many wires going over to that board and it looks like that's probably uh, an ambient light sensor right there to detect the ambient light and of course the uh, on off uh, soft power button in the middle and the other connector of course is just for our uh, left and right uh, speakers there nothing much happening here they've got an acoustic port a uh, bit of acoustic voodoo there and uh, well geez I don't know it's not terribly exciting I mean you know there's a ton of technology which goes into that board I mean it's just phenomenal and that's the thing I mean uh, you know Samsung um, you know one of the major players in the semiconductor um, industry and of course they do their own uh, custom silicon they've got uh, no less than uh, three devices on here which are uh, Samsung branded and they just wouldn't rebrand those they'd be uh, churning their own silicon for those and manufacturing and I know everyone's not going to be happy until I lift the skirt on this thing so um, I think I've taken out all the screws so let's let's give it a go e yep Ta-da! Look at that. Oh, yeah, baby. Woo! And this is why you, um, if you get one of these, even if the panel is faulty, folks, great opportunity to scrap parts out of this thing. Look at all the power stuff, which you do not find in um, LCD TVs these days. It's just, these plasma uh, TVs, totally different, high power technology. Oh, Look at all the heat sinks and power components. Love it. Let's go around and have a look at a few things at uh, random, shall we? Check it out. They've got some more uh, uh, tape here. Shielding tape connecting uh, this chassis to the outer chassis down in there. Nice. We've got our uh, uh, mains input filter. They've got actually a proper uh, mains input filter there. Nicely uh, earth tied, tied off to a dedicated post down in there with a shakeproof washer really like it and of course that goes over to our main power board here and um, it's an interesting mix of uh, technology they've got here this is a double-sided um, 
almost exclusively, yeah, it looks like entirely uh, through-hole components, all uh, dip stuff, of course, and this one down here is a combination of, uh, di you know, th through-hole connectors with, uh, uh, you know, some fairly uh, modern uh, advanced uh, reflow stuff, and then this board over here has been uh, shopped out to a Dong Yang Instrument uh, Corporation, and it's just a you know, low-cost, uh, single-sided, um, phenolic-based board. It's not even uh, a proper uh, fiberglass board. And the other boards over here for the um, other sides of the drivers, these are predominantly, that one's a mix of uh, surface mount and uh, predominantly through-hole there. And, of course, we've got uh, some uh, chip-on board or uh, BGA components down here for the uh, drivers with the heat sinks. Uh, stuck on top with their gunked all the way around the outside. So interesting mix of boards here, but check out this power board. I mean, this thing is absolutely massive. I see some labeling over the other side. We'll take a look at uh, in a minute. But the first thing you notice is uh, check out those uh, teeth in there. That is uh, not going to bite your hand off. That one's for um, uh, surge surge protection. Of course, it's a uh, spark gap. It's designed to uh, so that, that's why it's exposed. That's why you've got your exposed gold uh, copper like that and the little sharp points because uh, any uh, high voltage uh, transients coming in from the mains um, should, in theory, uh, jump over those gaps first and uh, dissipate the um, surge energy that way in the spark gap. But they've got some mobs there. Check out these huge chokes. Absolutely massive monsters. We've got some uh, HR, two HRC fuses down in there, so it looks like they've fused both lines. And then we've got some massive bridge rectifiers here, two of them, monsters. And then we've got our switching uh, transformer. Well, we've got quite a few switching transformers down in here. They would have uh, spared no expense on those. What have we got down in here? We have, let's see if we can get that. It's a 20N60. That's a uh, high voltage uh, power MOSFET down in there, a couple of other devices sharing the same heatsink, um, all uh, isolated from the uh, heatsink, of course. You can see the sill pad down in there. Then we've got our high voltage uh, caps here. They're our mains rated uh, caps. They'd be uh, smooth in the uh, DC coming out of this puppy. And a uh, lot more devices, a couple of power resistors down in there, a couple of huge more. Um, we'll look at the brand. I can't quite see it from here. But we'll uh, go around to the other side and take a look. Some lower voltage uh, supplies, switching supplies down in there. And there you have it, uh, Samsung brand. Not exactly the uh, world's best brand there. 105 degrees C uh, rated. Uh, it looks like the HP model. I'm not going to look up the uh, data sheet for those suckers. Same one over here as well. Uh, 270 microfarads, 450 volts. These ones are... Uh, 470 microfarads, 275 volts. And here's all our output voltages here on this uh, convenient table. I like it. Uh, VS there on the left-hand side, 200 volts at 1.5 amps. Geez, there's 300 watts right there, folks. 70 volts times uh, 0.7 amps. What's that? Another 50 watts. And uh, all the rest uh, just make up the uh, dregs there. But, geez, yeah, this thing is, uh, you know... Uh, as, as it said on the back panel, I think, uh, what was it, 380 volts, that's uh, 380 watts, sorry, uh, consumption, I'm not sure if it actually draws that in uh, operation, but it's uh, certainly capable of uh, all that power, so there's one beast of a board, and you can see the isolation in the uh, power supply too, and that's uh, uh, identified by this big thick uh, silk screen here which uh, goes underneath the optocouplers there you can see the optocouplers feeding back and it goes through here this transformer and obviously uh, these switching transformers here with some more optocouplers down in there so all this stuff around here is obviously mains uh, primary side and all the stuff down on this side is low voltage well you know 200 volts but it's the um, isolated side of the power supply and interestingly, uh, it did have a fan, a supply dedicated for the fan there, and it's got some connectors down in here, which are labelled uh, fan as well, but um, they've obviously uh, left them out. They decided that uh, this particular model uh, didn't need the fans. 
And on this board here, more uh, dodgy capnas. We've got Sanwa brand caps over here. Well, they're certainly not going to use Panasonic, are they? And down here we have our main uh, X driver board. And you might think, aha, look at these. Ribbon cables, just, uh, you know, uh, multi-way ribbon cables. But you take a look at them, and they're not. It's just one chunky bit of copper there. They're, these are not uh, ribbon cables. These are high current flex cables. And they use all the copper in there and all the pins on that connector for the high current interface. Because this is the uh, main X supply. I mean, here's our, uh, here's our horizontal uh, driving board all the way over there. And on this side is the other uh, return for that. And these are extremely high current. Um, you know, high power because it's got to take all of the channels that uh, are coming from the X side. And check out the uh, huge traces that they've got in there. I mean, all those uh, pins on that connector, they're all shorted together under there, all connected through. Look at all the via stitching there. Lots of heavy via stitching, solder field as well, all the way over here. So all of those, you can see, all three are actually connected together. They're all on the same trace. There it is. Goes all the way through here, through here, and over to there. And uh, we've got some inductors here inside uh, some heat shrink. Little exposed uh, coupler turn inductor down in there. Huge big ass uh, heat sink here. So the power uh, devices would be underneath there. And uh, another couple of little tiny heat sink for those two devices there. Right next to the caps. Jeez, you know. And here's our column board, and uh, I'm not sure if it's like the whole length of this. I doubt it. I think they've uh, they're split it up, but uh, it comes out the other side there. So I'm not going to take all this uh, metal work and all this uh, stuff here off. It's uh, not really worth our while. And here's a label here, Rev 2.0, NTSC uh, and PAL, and it's uh, telling you what the various uh, power supply voltages have to be set at. And of course, uh, all of these boards have some sort of uh, wave soldering on them. Like this one's got, uh, you know, quite a lot of through holes. So there's our direction arrow for our wave soldering machine. But even this board here, which you don't think has uh, really any um, through hole components on. Well, it does. It's got the connectors right here. So that one will also have the direction arrow for the wave soldering machine. And on our main power supply board here, here are our main caps. And look how close. There's only like five millimeters gap between that uh, main heatsink for the high voltage um, switching MOSFETs down in there. So I'm not sure how hot that gets, but that's a decent size heatsink. And those uh, caps are certainly not going to be kept cool. So that's not good for their life. But um, this thing does still seem to work. So I guess it hasn't been a problem on this particular unit. And of course, these things are so big ass heavy that it needs this huge bracing going across here. And here's uh, some mounting holes from the uh, back panel there. But it needs all that bracing in there. There's two of them just to keep the whole thing from just <laughs> collapsing in on itself. So yes, I suspect this uh, column driver board here is uh, probably split in half at the middle there. Because that's, you know, probably as big as you want to make a board. Um, in terms of the uh, panel size from the uh, bare board manufacturer and also what your um, uh, assembly machine can uh, handle as well. But in the horizontal direction, they can usually handle, uh, you know, quite large uh, sizes. But your bare board manufacturer, you, I mean, you can get a board that's like a metre long like that. But uh, you need to go to a uh, specialist manufacturer and you do pay a premium. So that would almost certainly be uh, split in the middle like that, two separate boards for um, each half of the uh, columns on the entire display. And once again on this uh, horizontal power driver board over here, um, all the um, major power components are under the heat sinks there, so uh, we can't see what they are. Real, You'd have to rip out the whole board and uh, get at the screws from underneath and uh, take it all off and there'd probably be some uh, heat sink compounded to get all ugly, so uh, we're not going to go that far today, but um, Here's our uh, horizontal drivers. As I said uh, before, these are um, they're probably uh, chip on board or BGA or uh, something like that. And these are, you can see, multi-way ribbons. And if you uh, counted those up, they would be, I'm not sure what this panel is. I think it's uh, 720p. Uh, so uh, 
do the math and we've got two, four, six of those for the entire um, uh, number of uh, vertical rows. So 720 divided by 6 is 120. So I don't know, someone want to count those up for us? If you're watching this in uh, HD, there should be 120 uh, plus conductors in there. And if you're curious to see the connector solution they've got in there, there it is. I uh, have no idea who the manufacturer of uh, that one is, if it's a custom or an off-the-shelf uh, job. Not entirely sure, but a, um, a, you know, it's a dual-sided uh, dual one, of course. And uh, all of those traces coming from the driver chips there. And once again, for the uh, column drivers, you can do the math on uh, the number of connectors there. I'm not sure how many... Uh, total across here but you can uh, it's probably uh, 1280 by 720 panel and there's the label for the samsung plasma display panel um made in uh, korea of course and uh, they would have manufactured uh, that themselves there you go uh, first of the ninth 2005 and uh, serial number and all the power requirements just for the panel itself so there you go that was uh, quite a decent find in the dumpster i think um i'm I'm not going to troubleshoot it today. I don't have enough time, and there could be nothing wrong with it. Maybe it's just a pebcac error, and I'm just uh, doing something uh, stupid. But yeah, I can't. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a normal uh, fault having, you know, not being a, like actually the panel, everything working, all the high voltage stuff, all the panel drivers all working, the panel itself, all that stuff usually goes. I mean, I didn't expect. Um, that to work and then not be able to feed in a signal so I don't know what's happening there um, maybe I've just got to uh, RTFM perhaps but um, I shouldn't I don't know if anyone's got any uh, idea what's uh, happening there please leave it in the comments but uh, I'll spend some more time on this uh, try and put it to some uh, decent use at least um, maybe it'll even replace our uh, our busted uh, Panasonic uh, plasma at home which I did a video on ages ago no I didn't ever uh, repair that one because it was the actual uh, panel at fault so very uh, costly to uh, well the panel module itself so very uh, costly to fix that thing and I was afraid that would be the problem with this one but the um, panel module in this seems just fine so um, yeah it's a it's quite a score from the old dumpster I like it dumpster diving works every time and uh, I hope you liked a, a quick look inside these uh, plasma TVs. I mean, they're still making them as far as I know. You can at least still buy um, Samsung uh, plasmas at your local um, uh, re retailer, at least here in Australia. So I presume they're still making them, but uh, I'm not sure how much uh, longer uh, plasma TVs are going to be around, really. I mean, it's like you can get a 51-inch. I mean, this is a 42-inch. You can get a 51-inch for... You know, I what is it, five, six hundred dollars or something, and that's the same brand uh, Samsung these days. I'm not sure how much this would have cost, maybe two or three grand uh, easily back in uh, 2005. But like these are so massively high power. Look at all the high power electronics in here. It's just uh, beautiful from a uh, a uh, teardown and uh, salvage point of view. You can really get some uh, useful parts out of these things from the uh, high voltage power section. So. Anyway, um, if you want to discuss it, uh, jump on over to the EEV blog forum. That is the best place to do it. That's where everyone hangs out. And, uh, well, this wasn't a teardown Tuesday, was it? No, this was a dumpster diving day. Um, I just happened to find this in the dumpster. And, of course, I couldn't help but uh, take the back off the thing. So, anyway, if you like dumpster diving, please give it a big thumbs up. And, hopefully, I'll try and find some more stuff in the old dumpster and uh, give it a look. Catch you next time.